At 6.02. Mrs. Dryden. Present. Mr. Sullivan. Dr. Cabby. Present. Ms. Hupp. Here. Dr. Ramirez. Mrs. Peterson. Present. Mrs. Torres. All right. Is there a motion for the adoption of the agenda? I so um, move the agenda is presented. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Five zero. No opposition. Any public comment? On closed session. No. All right, at this time, we will go ahead and close for closed session at 6.03, and we'll return in about 30 minutes. Okay. okay. We return, uh, we closed in uh, closed session. We adjourned from closed session at 6.24. And the time is now 6.26. No actions taken in closed session. Go ahead and stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Right hand over your heart, face the flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries, 5-0. Oh. Okay, so we have one abstention by, sorry about that. Um, one abstention by Mr. Sullivan. So that is 4-0, 4-0 and one abstention. All right, do we have an audience to address the Board of Trustees? Now let's talk about reorganizing the board officers. I know that we have, do we have any interest starting with Mrs. Dryden to be the president? I was gonna nominate you. <laughs> you never told me anything. <laughs> All right. Any any interest by anyone? All right. Let's. Is anybody interested in being the vice president? Uh, other than Mrs. Dryden, who's currently the vice president. No, all right. Do we have to no. stop? Do we have to finish uh, with the president okay. before we move on? I don't know. How do we do that? Yeah, you have to. Uh, you have to uh, conclude with the president. Okay, so we first. have to decide on the president first. Okay, so let's go back to the president. Again, anybody interested in being the board? So does that mean you do not accept my nomination for you, Mrs. <laughs> no. I don't know. Was that? Is that what you were saying? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I, I'll, I'd be more than happy to continue to serve another term, uh, but I'm also very happy to allow anybody else who is interested, including Mrs. Dryden and the rest, to <clears throat> serve as the board president for the next uh, 
for the next, uh, what would you call it, a year? Okay, the next term. Uh, so, <clears throat> anything further? Any, anybody have anything to say? Well, I, I've made it known for years, but I haven't. Okay. To be the board president. All right. Anybody else? So how many nominations do we have on the floor right now? One. Two for Jamie and Mr. Sullivan, correct? Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sullivan wants, I didn't hear Mr. Sullivan want to be president. Is that what somebody said? Mr. Sullivan said that he is interested in being president for the next term. And I believe he was nominated by, by Julie. Yes, Ms. Huff. So I, so in this case, since Mr. Sullivan is interested, then I will go ahead and support that nomination. Should we vote? Any discussion, any further discussion? Okay, so let's see. Is there, a, do, do I make a motion? Is that the way it works? There's a there. Okay. First you open nomination. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, you accept all the nominations. Okay. And those people that have been nominated accept the nomination. Okay. Then you vote nomination. Okay. A, a vote. Okay. So, Mr. Sullivan, just to make it clear, you accept that nomination. He does accept the nomination. And at this time, we take, make, you said, well, Jamie nominated so thank you so much, Jamie, for nominating me. Uh, given that Mr. Sullivan is also interested, I will go ahead and, and pass it on to him, but I appreciate the nomination. And so at this time, we go ahead and close the nomination and we take a vote. So all in favor of having Mr. Sullivan president for the next term? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. all right. <laughs> so the motion carries. Any op anybody opposed? I don't think there's any opposition. I don't think there's any. I think we are glad to have Mr. Sullivan as the board president. Congratulations. Uh, looking forward to that. All right. So now we move on to the vice president. I'm sorry. Oh, OK. Sorry. Moving on to the position of vice president. The nominations are open. Is there, do we have any nominations? I nominate uh, Ms. Hupp to be vice president. Do you accept that nomination? Oh. Okay. Anyone that? else? <laughs> Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Um, sure. Hearing no other nominations, the nominations are now closed. All those in favor of electing board member Huff to the position of vice president, say aye. 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 I didn't see yours. I, I'm assuming that was 5-0. Thanks, Jean. Aye. I was looking around here and I didn't look at the, the <laughs> screen. Um, so Ms. Huff is now the vice president. Next, we have the position of uh, board clerk. Um, nominations are now open for board clerk. Have any nomination? Pardon me? Do we have a nomination for, for Sandra to be board clerk? I, I nominate. <laughs> Sandra. 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 We have a double nomination for Sandra Romero as being the board clerk. Are there any other nominations? 
I think Jamie was trying to jump in there too. That's what happens when you're physically your president. So uh, nominations are now closed. All those in favor of having uh, Jamie Dryden as being the board clerk, or not Jamie Dryden, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you're looking at me, but you're clerk. thinking her. <laughs> Say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Um, I think that's all the board positions. Oh, no, there's a secretary of the board. Uh, traditionally, that is the superintendent to act as, a sep as the uh, secretary. Is that an appointment or is that elected? It's an appointment. Any uh, feedback on why we should not have Dr. Uh, Ramirez to be the board secretary? Hearing none. The appointment is that Dr. Ramirez will be the board secretary. Um, what's the election of? Now then, there's other positions that uh, we usually, we can, they've usually been by appointment or by request for different positions. One of those has been, uh, a member to the Ventura County Board of School District Organization. I've been on that committee for the last 18 years. And uh, they meet generally as a rule once a year, unless there's something that comes up with the school district that wants to unify is typically is what it's been. Um, and they just elect people to be on the board to attend those meetings. Uh, that's what the responsibilities for that. Meeting and we just had that meeting in October. Um, and so there's somebody that's, those positions will be in place for another year or two before they change up that board. Um, anybody have a desire to be on that board? I'm not going to continue on that position, Mr. Sullivan, if you're yeah. so willing. I'm so willing. Um, we also have the Camrio Chamber Education Committee. And that one really hasn't functioned all that much, meaning the chamber I don't think has really done anything. And so nobody's really attended. What, the chamber? Right. Right, but there's usually someone from this board that will attend those meetings. And I hear that those meetings are, are sparse. Does anybody have an interest in being the liaison to the Ventura County Chamber? I'll go ahead and do it. Okay, Dr. Canby. Um, the Mesa PFO and usually the, and the MEF. Uh, Jamie, you've done those the last couple of years. You've done them both. I have. Do you have a desire to continue doing that? I attend the meetings anyways, so <laughs> I can continue. Or, and if another person would like to, then they could also attend the meetings, but. I don't see anybody jumping out of their chairs. Then it's me. To do that. So Jamie, if you'll do those two positions, you continue with that. Um, I don't think that there's any other positions that we need at this time. Okay. okay. Moving forward, um, unless there's any other comments on the digital organization that needs to, reorganization that needs to happen. Seeing that, we'll, we'll go to the superintendent's report. Okay, good evening and congratulations, Board, uh, board President, Mr. Sullivan. Congratulations. Um, congratulations to all of you <clears throat> on your new on your new roles. Um, in terms of the superintendent's report, I want to, uh, something that was not agendized, but obviously um, I wanted to call, uh, call out um, this weekend, we, we experienced here locally uh, <clears throat> a pretty significant emergency. 
the South Fire uh, really <clears throat> uh, threatened and created uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, concern and, and certainly threats of safety for our local community here. Um, and I, I wanted to make mention of a couple of things. One, that Mesa, just a couple of months ago, uh, the board uh, supported the um, the extension of the physical uh, plan to be used in um, in partnership with county agencies around emergency responsiveness. And here we are this past weekend having uh, hosted and, and served uh, as an emergency uh, command center for that very emergency. Um, so I wanted to just uh, express my appreciation to the board, um, also express my appreciation to our emergency responders, uh, fire and sheriff, but many, many, many more agencies, uh, some that were not even uh, regional agencies that responded, and so many others that took part. Um, some of these are not just uh, agencies responding, they are in fact, um, in, in the instances of the two with whom I was communicating this weekend, Mr. Martinez and Mr. Holmes, parents here at Mesa. So it's just amazing uh, to, to see their work and collaboration and how just responsive they were to, to the threat. And uh, I just, I couldn't be more um, just amazed and, and grateful that they were because uh, the, those those conditions are are just uh, so unpredictable, and yet they rose to the occasion, um, really preserving uh, property, life, and many of our families here, staff, um, many people here present, um, we're all we're all impacted. So I just wanted to make mention of the fact that that is something that we um, that occurred, that we are still working through, and that we did our best to support and play a part in um, a successful resolution. So um, I'm, I'm grateful that it didn't result in more and that I'm optimistic that um, I'm hopeful more than anything else that uh, a situation like that doesn't repeat itself in the near future. Um, I have two questions if sure. I may. Uh, I, I know that board members that live in the vicinity of the Satori Country Club and such that they're all well and no negative impact. But what about the farms and uh, migrant populations that are in that area that were along the cusp, any negative impacts or reports there? Uh, negative, yes, but I wouldn't say that there's there was a loss of, of property. I, I, as I understand that there wasn't, um, and and that had everything to do with just strategic efforts by by uh, responders to avoid that being the case. Uh, they acted quickly. Uh, we received an initial call that they would be staging here. Uh, Saturday morning, early morning, not 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 too early, but right around the eight or nine or so, they were already setting up here. Um, and from there, they just immediately responded as soon as that threat grew. And initially, they were there to support Santa Paula and 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 where where its origins, as I understand it, began. But then very quickly, it became a very local matter. So, um, an answer to your question. Uh, we've not received any reports and we checked in with with as many of our staff and families as possible and uh, we didn't receive any reports to the contrary but that rather that people were safe um, i didn't think there was but i just wanted to hear from somebody else that that was the case the second question i have since we approved that um, memorandum to be able to be a, a staging facility here what did we learn from that and how involved was Mesa? Did we have to have staff here to open gates, open doors? Um, was that all coordinated ahead of time? Uh, did we learn anything that we could have done better uh, in the future? Not that we want to have a future event. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so many of these things are, or so many of these events are very dynamic and they're very, very situational. But overall, uh, one, we've been taking a lot of emergency precautions. In this instance, it happened over the weekend with staff and students, families not present. Uh, there was not uh, at any point in time where, where was I led to believe that we were in imminent concern as far as the, the, the physical plant. Uh, but because we're proactive, we had actually installed a couple months back a Knox box, which allowed us to, to very effectively uh, work with our uh, responders so that they had full access of the, of the 
of the building without anybody uh, coming down here and delaying things further. So they were able to access the gate through uh, the Knox key, and that's been longstanding. And then once on site, they began staging. And once they knew that they would be here for an extended period of time, they uh, reached out to me and I pointed to them in the direction of that Knox box, which contained uh, keys that they could readily access. Uh, at that point, it was more about uh, just having full access to the to the site, and in particular, uh, full use of restrooms. That's that's that becomes just one of those things that is important as you have uh, personnel here for extended periods of time. But that said, they had full access to the building. Uh, they were incredibly professional. Uh, I I came and I was in constant communication Saturday and Sunday. Came out here on Sunday, and um, by the time that uh, they cleared out. Uh, it's as if they hadn't been here, which is pretty remarkable. Good. Yeah, just very professional, very well done, incredibly coordinated, and again, um, I think the results in in in, in a matter of speaking uh, speak for themselves in that they were able to really preserve um, so much of what could otherwise have gone in a much 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 uh, more dangerous position. So we're very fortunate, and again, I just wanted to open up by saying that um, acknowledging that that is an event that just transpired that we're still, in fact, understanding better in terms of our response particularly around communication. And then uh, lastly, um, extending that gratitude uh, because uh, some of these are, are our very own families, uh, not only in harm's way, but also responding to the to the danger. Um, so with that, I, I just, uh, I wanted to take that moment. Um, as it pertains to my presentation, um, I, I have the agenda there and um, I'll, I'll do my best to just move briskly about the topics. Um, I always like to start with events, things that really are highlights. It's not an exhaustive list, but I wanted to highlight a few things specifically. Uh, I'll start with um, a, a Shop with a Cop event that happened uh, in partnership or through the VC uh, Shares Foundation. Um, this, this occurred on Saturday, December 2nd, where seven of our families, students and families, were able to participate in an event, holiday event, uh, here at uh, the Camarillo, uh, the Target in Camarillo. And uh, these kiddos, each one of them was given uh, an allowance of $300, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's pretty amazing. And, and all of this, I had had previous experience with this event um, working in a prior district years ago. Uh, Mesa had not participated in the time that I'd been here, uh, but this was, this resulted and I have to uh, recognize uh, through that partnership with Mrs. Mrs. Nowak, our former trustee and um, former parent, former trustee, alum, alumni uh, of, of Mesa, uh, who called me a few weeks back and informed me that there was this opportunity. And, and she and I will continue talking because there's other opportunities that she would, would like to bring to the school. But specific to this, um, she put me in contact with uh, Officer Mario Molina, and he was fantastic. Immediately, uh, we were able to put together a list. Uh, we That list could have been much more extensive than seven kids for sure. But um, in doing so, we wanted to bring some holiday cheer to some of our, of our kiddos. And uh, sure enough, uh, they were there. Uh, it was a phenomenal event, breakfast, uh, some, some uh, additional gifts on behalf of the foundation and the sheriff. Um, and just it, it turned out to be a really lovely event and just the smiles and the joy for these kids was was just pretty remarkable. So I wanted to to share that with the board uh, and um, hopefully it's a partnership that can continue into future years. And again, uh, tremendous uh, debt of gratitude to Mrs. Nowak, who is very involved in the Sheriff's Foundation um, and uh, brought that uh, to my attention and we were able to to um, connect with our families and, and our kiddos. Okay. Made these kids feel so special. What were their reaction like? 
Well, as you can imagine, it was phenomenal. And, you know, the families, uh, it, it took us a couple of passes, a couple of pieces of communication to share with them. You know, it was kind of, an, it, it was more or less of an incredible event because it, it's a pretty significant uh, monetary contribution. And for each one of the kiddos, and in certain instances, it was siblings. And uh, each one of them was 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 given that that uh, that allowance, and um, and it was a combination of things that you can imagine for children of this age, but it was also uh, uh, clothing and other other uh, needs that also came about. So um, again, I just think that it's a wonderful opportunity, and I'm I'm very fortunate to we're very fortunate to have had uh, Mrs. Nowak reach out to us and and extend that to our to our community. Um, next, I wanted to also highlight just this just happened. This just took place uh, this past Saturday, uh, the Camarillo Christmas Parade. Uh, it's the first time in, you know, recent memory or perhaps even longer than that, that we participated. Uh, I just can't, uh, I just can't believe the turnout. Great, great turnout. Great turnout of families, great turnout of staff and uh and and kids of, of various ages, uh, from our youngest to to our middle schoolers and eighth graders, uh, it was a great opportunity to just come together as a community first and foremost, but also show the extended community uh, who we are and what we're about. And so, very grateful, very grateful to Mrs. Dryden, who's been who's been uh, very very much uh, keeping this on the forefront, and that we we're finally able to make it happen. Uh, very grateful uh, to Ms. Romero also, who was there joining us, both Ms. Ms. Dryden and Ms. Romero, and uh, to Ms. Kuklinski uh, and the rest of the committee that um, that planned this. Uh, there were several planning meetings and a lot of coordination just to get ourselves uh, situated uh, and some communication that went out. But our community responded, and I had a blast. My, my youngest son was there, and it was just a really great opportunity uh, along the parade route to wave to some families and see some some folks who are connected to Mesa. Uh, our staff was amazing, greeting and just being very cheerful and and very enthusiastic. And so I'm just very uh, I, I just couldn't have come away more impressed by, by our showing and by uh, you know who we showed who we showed the community uh, that we really are. So I don't know if uh, Mrs. Dryden or Ms. Romero wish to say anything or the rest of the board for that matter? Yeah. I just thought it was a great turnout. There was such a great amount of staff um, and all kinds of staff. So there was teachers. We had Ms. Debbie there from the cafeteria. We had Mr. Puga there from facilities. I mean, it was it was literally a community, which was such a great experience and showing. So it wasn't just a couple of teachers and there was all ages, you know, cause there was TKers and eighth graders, you know, it was the full spectrum of kids. It was about 50 people or so. It was in the forties for sure. People that came out, um, everybody was sporting their Mesa gear and miles, at least it, when we we're walking by, you know, somebody was like, oh, is that Rio Mesa, you know, the high school? And they're like, oh, no, that's a different school. You know, it was kind of like one of those things where he was like, oh, those people didn't know we exist until right now. <laughs> and so it was fun to watch my own child, you know, kind of hear the crowd and then say, oh, they didn't know we exist. And now they do. Um, so I thought, I don't know if anybody else had experiences like that, but, you know, that's the idea of is to show the community we are literally in their backyard and that we have such amazing programs and we had different banners that represented, you know, things that we're definitely proud of. Not all the things we do, but things that that are amazing and special about Mesa. And so just thought it was such a great mix of people and kiddos and families and staff. And we had people playing the saxophone. I mean, it was just all over, um, you know, well-rounded, which was so much fun. And, okay, so that, I believe the walk was about two miles. Is that what it was? I believe so. Mm -hmm. It did not feel like two miles. It was windy and it wasn't something that bothered me. There was something about it that the wind and the walk, these two miles, was not bothersome. It was, it was nice. Yeah, it was just a fun, fun event. And uh, 
you know, uh, just a good memory, I think, for everybody involved and particularly the kids to, to see that pride and that joy and be in the center of attention uh, as, as they wave to the crowd. And again, uh, a lot of fun. So thank you. Uh, we're hoping to make this uh, an annual tradition uh, where where this is just what we do. And and I was mentioning to Miss Miss Kuklinski earlier today, hopefully it's an event that kids grow up uh, looking forward to and participating in so that these kiddos who are the youngest uh, grow up in it and the kiddos who move beyond us uh, at this moment can always come back and participate or or just enjoy from from the um, from the audience so either way it, it was a great event and we're looking forward to making that a staple of what we do on an annual basis um, and then lastly just in terms of not so much events but really kind of a milestone um, our fall athletic season is, is coming to a close we're going to be uh, moving forward with our winter season um, Part of fall athletics was uh, our, our girls volleyball, our flag football, and cross country. And um, I, I have our volleyball team here, our 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 uh, our uh, middle school volleyball team here. But um, you know they 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 were just in that championship game, um, very very competitive. Uh, they they fought to the end. Really proud of them. They they wound up in second place. Um, just an amazing, actually really, really amazing, um, group of, of, uh, of girls that, um, you know, the eighth graders are going to move on and I'm sure they're going to play uh, at the high school level, most likely Real Mesa, but that's not a guarantee. Uh, but just some amazing, amazing players. And, uh, you know, we, we happen to come up short, but in this instance, um, you know, we, we just continue to put out, uh, put up a good showing. So, uh, thank you to our coaches. Um, and and to our girls who who um, really made us uh, made us proud uh, throughout the season and um, and and of course during that championship game as well. Um, moving moving on, uh, just wanted to make a mention of a few things on the learning uh, side. Um, specifically, we're we're nearing the end here of our of our scorecard design. We're going to be bringing that forward very soon. Um, that is something that has been in collaboration with our uh, school leadership team. And um, I'm excited because I think this is going to just solidify some of our metrics, some we have, and some we will look to build out so that we are really uh, paying attention to the things that are the most important and the, the things that are really uh, worth tracking as we talk about our progress uh, now and into the future. Next slide, please. Um, I also, this has been running in in, in the um, weekly memo, but um, just recently we've been, um, we we came together with uh, Open Syed. They are field testing uh, elementary. Their goal is to create open source uh, elementary or science-based materials for elementary uh, grades K-5. And this is a partnership. Some of the uh, partners are listed there, K-12 Alliance, West Ed, California Science Project. And um, we we will be participating in and having a team of our teachers in grades K through five participate um, in order to not just provide input on these materials as they're developing, but also receive professional learning. And I think that's the two-way relationship that um, for us as a small single school district can be incredibly, incredibly powerful to um, advance our programming. So uh, with that said, um, I listed some of the benefits. Uh, this is a this is a partnership that promises to go over several years, but some of the benefits is mainly a greater understanding of those next generation science standards and also uh, greater clarity as we talk about a future adoption in science. Um, on the facilities front, I just wanted to make mention of a few things that are coming up. Uh, but before that, we are going to um, been working with um, Mr. De Leon uh, on a request for proposal process um, starting starting now and heading into January uh, in order to uh, focus on um, a master plan in order to focus on a master plan that really has at the heart of it, a lot of the systems that the board uh, had mentioned some time ago, uh, looking at mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire, all those things that are really critical operations that sometimes don't get all the attention 
but uh, we want to really conduct a thorough audit and uh, see where we are so that the board has the information um, that you all need in order to make a decision about um, the remaining funds for Measure O. So that is something that is on the horizon, more information to come on that. And over the next uh, several weeks of winter break, we have some pretty important projects coming up. You see them there. Uh, on the technology side, uh, we are replacing these wireless access points. That's already slated to happen the first week of January. Um, we are looking to renovate our stage. Uh, that stage is definitely um, uh, uh, a big showcase for us uh, in a number of ways. And we wanna make sure that it uh, is um, in the best shape possible. And uh, we're gonna be just doing a smaller uh, paint project here. That'll, that'll also help beautify the campus. And lastly, uh, attendance. Um, we continue to focus greatly on attendance. Uh, we've been more or less holding steady um, over the last couple of months, hovering right above or right under 95%. Our goal is to be at least at 95%. Uh, so at this point, we are close to our mark. We certainly want to exceed that. And... Um, we will continue to make this a priority, um, developing plans to address um, any in attendance, but also rewarding the students uh, and families who um, who make that commitment and and are here every single day. And then, just to conclude, some of the some of the items on the horizon here, upcoming events, um, we'll have our full steam ahead uh, showcase here coming up on Thursday, our eighth grade banquet next week. And then we have a holiday break uh, over the next uh, several weeks as we head into the latter part of this month. That's for uh, for our uh, after school programs, yes. And with that, um, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. President, we are, I'll go ahead and conclude my superintendent. Yeah. I'm full steam ahead. What time does that start? Uh, full steam ahead. I will get you a time. I will get you a time on Thursday. It's going to be on Thursday afternoon. Yeah, it's so it's probably 5:30ish, I don't remember, I'm but sure. it's going to be fun because they have different clubs doing different presentations. So there's actually going to be a, a Wizard of Oz play by one of the groups in Steam and I'm sure there are other things will be on display from other groups and other classes. So in sense, it'll be a nice thing if if a board member wants to attend, because um, it'll showcase the different elements of STEAM and the different age ranges. What time do you say that would start again? I don't know. We off either. I, I will get you a time because we've been talking about how to align it to the to the natural pickup of the program, and uh, we we wanted to time it accordingly. Yeah, that's this coming Thursday, right? Okay, moving on. Board members, uh, was there any other questions or comments with regards to the superintendent's report? Okay, moving on. Let's uh, board members' uh, reports and communications. Any correspondence? Did you? Nothing can be as a former board president. Okay. Um, Board members' reports and communications or interests and concerns? We may get out of the PSPA if you wanted to. That would be a great thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it was actually really good and interesting. Um, I learned a lot, which was great. And it was really nice to talk with other trustees and board members to see how they're dealing with different issues and what's affecting all different schools from like little to ginormous ones. Um, and um, the sessions were really great. I have a lot of materials that I downloaded and I have it for everybody if I can figure out how to get it to you, Dr. Ramirez, and you can figure out how to get it to the board. Um, I took the one day training, um, which was I think eight or nine hours for new trustees. And um, it was really great because um, we learned a lot of the little nits and crannies. I didn't feel so lost anymore. But I think the biggest thing that I got out of it was actually speaking with all the other um, trustees throughout, like all throughout the state, and seeing what they were doing with the LCAP and how they were doing with declining enrollment and TK and 
how middle school is declining in some areas versus, you know, running like K through eight and stuff. So it was, it was really great and interesting. It'd be good for us to go to more of them because um, there's so many that are scheduled for the sessions. You can't go to all of them because they're all scheduled at the same time. So you could like break out and say, hey, okay, I'm going to go to this one, I'm going to go to that one. So anyway, it was, it was a good experience. Um, any other uh, reports, interests, or concerns? Hearing none, we'll go on to the consent agenda. And uh, does anybody have anything for the consent agenda that they would like to discuss? Not hearing anything, we'll adopt the consent agenda by common consent. Um, Next is uh, action items. This is the first interim, interim presentation and report. Um, we have a consideration to adopt the 2023-2024 first interim report. Now, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the first interim report. Is there a second? I'll second a motion. Um, discussion. Assuming that Tammy would like to have some time. Uh, as she, as uh, Mrs. Peterson uh, gets uh, situated, I just wanted to share a couple of things. One is a appreciation for, for her work and her staff. Uh, we have been tied at the hip uh, since my arrival here, constantly monitoring the budget, constantly looking at projections, constantly making adjustments. Um, I also want to say that... Um, what you'll hear here uh, in a moment um, also is an acknowledgement that we have been very, very uh, tight on those budgets. In other words, um, very aligned to make sure that our revenue and our expenditures are very, very much tethered together. So um, that'll be one of the major takeaways of, of Mrs. Peterson's um, presentation. So um, with that said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to her. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, members of the board. It's my pleasure to present tonight's first interim. And we'd like to start the report off by doing a comparison of where we thought we were going to be at adopted budget and where we are as of uh, first interim. <clears throat> and while the reporting deadline, we report actuals as of October 31st, most of the data that you're seeing is pretty current um, as we completed compiling all of the data. Uh, last week. So when we look at uh, enrollment at for 23-24, we had projected enrollment of 566 students. We weren't that far off the mark. We actually had 568. So um, we had two additional students from uh, that we at fall census. And then in 24-25, we're projecting there will be 570 students as compared to 569 at budget adoption. And then 554 students in 25-26, and that compares to 553 uh, at budget adoption. So we're not we're we're tracking very well, but you can see we're on a gradual decline as we see some of our larger cohorts graduate out. We're not seeing the number of TK and K students backfill those numbers. When we look at projected ADA, we're projecting 5.53 more ADA in the current year than prior year, or than an adopted budget, excuse me. And then that carries through um, 4.45 ADA in uh, at first interim, or an increase of 4.45 increase as compared to budget, the adopted budget, and then 4.25 in 25-26. And the primary difference is not because we have more students, but it's primarily because we're seeing an improvement in need ADA. Shortly after COVID, we saw uh, per, our attendance drop precipitously, and uh, Dr. Ramirez has emphasized the importance of being at school. And as a result, we're seeing um, those trends swing upward, and the percentage of ADA is growing as compared to what it was uh, two years ago. Our funded ADA is flat because, uh, as you may recall, we're funded at the the higher of current year ADA, prior year ADA, or the three-year average ADA. 
And so we're still being funded at the three-year average. So there wasn't a difference. Um, but as we do move forward, we're seeing, again, slight increases just because of the these changes in percentage. Our unduplicated pupil count has remained fairly static, although we're seeing slight increases, which is always helpful to the budget. The district does not receive uh, concentration grant funding, but we do receive supplemental. And for every student that is unduplicated, uh, we receive additional funds. And so um, those numbers are, are, are a vital component of the LCFF calculation. And then when we look at our LCFF revenue, um, we're anticipating uh, $9,000 more. And again, that's predominantly because of that change in, not because of the change in ADA, but because of the increase in unduplicated pupil count. And then in 24-25, we're anticipating $72,000 more. And in 25-26, $83,000. When we look at the makeup and the components of LCFF, as you may recall, last year, um, it was skewed slightly because we saw an increase in one-time monies. We're, we're going back to the days now of LCFF being about 75% of our revenue, although there were was a point in time was when it was over 80%. So we're still seeing those state categorical funds. And it will be interesting as the, the governor approaches his budget in uh, proposal in January, which way he will go, whether he'll continue to fund those programs or... Uh, I know there's a, a large number of members of the fiscal community, CASBO, AXA, that are really pushing that we really focus on fully funding LCFF and making sure that schools um, that were able to, to fund the, the core programs. Federal revenue, uh, we have are anticipating $400,000, and those are restricted dollars. We have spent all of the federal ESSER monies, so those uh, are... Uh, Title One, or excuse me, Title One, Title Two, uh, Title Four monies, as well as special ed IDEA funds. Other state revenue, uh, where we receive uh, the ELOP grant, which is much larger this year. And then um, other local revenue constitutes our AB602 dollars on the restricted side. And then we have just made some small site updates as local revenue based upon what we're currently receiving. And then one change in the state revenue side on the unrestricted side is we are now recognizing those transportation funds that the, the legislature took action on last year. We're seeing an increase in LCFF on the transportation component, a slight increase that's receiving COLA now. And then um, also those uh, excesses that we're spending in our transportation program, uh, we are seeing additional revenues come from the state. When we look at certificated and classified and employee benefits, that constitutes about 69% of the budget. When we look at uh, books and supplies, that's about 5%. Services and other operating expenditures of 16%. And capital outlay is just a very small component of the budget at 1% and then other outgoes 9%. That other outgo includes those monies that we pass through to Golden Valley uh, for their special ed programs. We receive those funds as revenue and then we pass them through as an outgo. And then also that includes um, those students that are enrolled in uh, other district and county uh, special ed programs. The total expenditures are anticipated to be um, a little over $8.8 .8 million. And that's both on the restricted and unrestricted side. When we look at our multi-year projections, we've seen some, some good shifts as compared to adopted budget. Um, we're projecting deficit spending now on the unrestricted side of only $9,000. That's down um, significantly from where it was at adopted budget. Uh, Dr. Ramirez manages the budget quite well, and we've been able to recognize some savings, as well as those additional revenues that I mentioned, like the transportation funds and uh, <clears throat> some other savings. Then when we look at 24-25, we're anticipating deficit spending of only $24,000, and then we are anticipating a surplus of 25-26. And that's pre-supposing um, that we're funded at the COLAs that were projected with the adopted budget. Um, we may, we'll may see some shifting, obviously, at second, second interim once the governor releases his proposal. 
and what the anticipated COLA is. We are anticipating that will be down slightly from where it currently is, but as to to what extent, there's still a lot of uncertainty around that, um, depending on who you listen to, whether it's the Legislative Analyst Office, whether it's um, UCLA economic forecast. We are recognizing some cooling on the uh, inflation side, which is good news for the economy as a whole. Um, it's good news for our budgets because we did experience some inflationary factors that relates to uh, books and supplies, uh, services, those types of things. So that's good news for the district. So as you can see, our reserves are holding strong at around 17%. Uh, and that's good news for the district because we were looking at some significant deficit spending, um, but because of some shifts in the budget, some savings that we've captured, I think we're in a good position as we move forward into a second interim and then adopt a budget. It's hard to believe we're already halfway through the school year um, because it will begin. It's time to start thinking about an adopted budget Again, we're just in that continual cycle. We finish one and we immediately start thinking about another. So when we look at your other funds in your cafeteria fund, we're anticipating an increase of about $49,000. Universal meals has been um, good for Mesa because uh, we've seen the number of students uh, participating and receiving meals uh, grow significantly. So we are managing that surplus. We did, uh, one of the concerns is having too much cash in um, Fund 13, um, but we were meet, able to meet those requirements this year, so we didn't have to do a spin down plan. Uh, on in, Within the general fund, we do have some uh, kitchen expenditure grant or kitchen infrastructure monies that we'll be looking at that do need to be spent um, uh, this year and next year. And then in your deferred maintenance fund, we have about 722,000, which is good as we look at some of the infrastructure needs of Mesa. Pupil transportation and equipment fund, we have about $157,000, which obviously we'll need when um, to complete the purchases of the electric buses. Um, the grant pays for a large portion of those buses, but there will be um, some uh, needs that Mesa will need to contribute as well as uh, the charging stations, those types of things. And then when we look at um, our special reserve funds, we have $56,000 in the technology fund. And then in the equipment fund, we have about $11,000. In our building fund, we have about 3.5 million. Those are bond monies. And so those have uh, are restricted by the language of the bond. And then in our capital facilities fund, we have about $108,000. In Fund 35, we have another 58,000. And then um, Fund 51, that's, those are all monies that are used to uh, pay debt service on the bonds uh, that were uh, passed, not only for the current bond measure, but previous bond measures as well. So I'll told the, the district's in a very good position. Um, we have uh, sufficient cash reserves. Some of the, the topics are because of the downturn in revenue is whether or not um, there will be deferrals again, um, but fortunately for Mesa, we are in a, a cash-rich position, so uh, we feel like we could weather that quite well. So uh, the district, all told, is in a very good position at first interim. Are there any questions? Jamie, did you have a question? You just always know I should, huh? I guess, um, I don't know if we're going to be going over the other attachments or not, but if I was skimmed through the other attachments and they seem to be very similar um, to other years and to other um, adopted things. So I just wanted to confirm that there's there's nothing different or this year or this interim that needs to be called out in the actual um, like interim report. I get, I'm not understanding your question as to whether or not there's significant concerns. So the interim report is where it says, yes, I met this, where I didn't, you know, all of those. And to me, it looked very similar, like normal, like the categories where we typically say we met or didn't meet um, were the same. So I just wanted uh, to- On the certification page? 
Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing something. No, those are, so um, just so that you have a reference point where those answers are coming from, those are, are pulled from the criteria and standards. And what the criteria and standards do is they compare information that was reported at budget adoption. So we're at first interim, so they're comparing budget adoption. At second interim, they'll be taking, looking at first interim and adopted budget information. So all of those answers that are within the certification are found in the criteria and standards. And so that's, uh, you want to make sure, there are certain questions you want to say, make sure say yes. And there are certain questions that you want to make sure they say no, um, just to be in a good fiscal position. Uh, one of the things uh, that it does look at is whether or not our uh, fiscal, our person, our uh, HR, Reporting and our payroll systems are the same, which yes, they are. Um, some districts have to manage it in different systems. And so you have to report that out. Uh, some districts choose not to use a county managed accounting system. So you report that out as well. That's why you're seeing those, those answers being very consistent because there are things that don't change from year to year. Uh, it, and one of the big things to look at is one, do you have a sufficient cash reserves? And yes, we do um, to conclude the current fiscal year. So that's reported also out in the criteria and standards. And then it asks a few other questions, but that's where all of those answers are being pulled from is from that criteria and standards. Is that helpful? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that nothing You're on mute. new this year. Interim. Jamie, could you can you see that again, please? I was just making sure that there was nothing new this interim compared to before, so that that way, you know, just to bring it to our attention. But it sounds like it's the same. It's the typical answers. We have the systems in place. We're doing all the things we should have been doing, and all the things noticed. Um, here as far as the reserves and everything are in good state. Correct. Any other questions? Comments? I just had one other question. I don't know if this is the appropriate place for it. We had submitted uh, application for reimbursement of some uh, maintenance and building funds. Have we, I mean, I'm sure that's still in process, but do we know any situation or status of that? We're in a queue. Um, those, so as part of there's, we're waiting for another bond to be passed, a state bond building fund. And there's some question as to whether or not that will be placed on the ballot. Um, there's varying opinions between the legislature and the governor, um, as to whether another, not another bond will be placed on, um, either the Springs ballot or in November, but we are in the queue. We know that we've submitted all the documentations. So now we just wait. It's just waiting for the funding portion. Correct. You know, prove is pretty much done. Now it's the funding. It's just waiting until those dollars become available. Okay. Thank you. Like that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Everyone, all those in favor of adopting the 2023 2024 first interim report say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Uh, item number next uh, consideration of adoption of resolution 23 24 05 regarding the annual and the five year accounting and development fees for the fiscal year 2022 2023 as per GC 66001 uh, paragraph D. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. And move. Is there a second? Second. And uh, any discussion? Can we get a little bit of Those background? Funds are found within Fund 25 for the board's reference. Um, they're right. restricted funds for growth. I, I'm just going to make one comment. You know, we're doing this, we're just, this is paperwork. It's a matter of getting things done. And I get that. Um, my biggest beef about the whole developer fee thing is that um, I prefer that we not do it 
just by rope, but we got to do it by rope because if we don't do anything, then we don't get anything. And the Oxford Union High School District gets everything. And so it's going to happen. And so it's it's just a matter of paperwork. And I wish it wasn't that way, but those are only wishes, right? Anyway, uh, any other further discussion on this? No. Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of adopting res resolution 23-2405 regarding the annual and five-year accounting and development fees for the fiscal year 2022 through 2023 as per GC 66001. Paragraph B, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries 5-0. Uh, uh, we're considering the acceptance of the certified signatures for the period of uh, January 1, 2024 through uh, June 30, 2024. Do That's I have moved. It's been moved by Dr. Canby. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Ms. Hub. Uh, seconds. Uh, any discussion? Soon we'll just take care of that at the end of the meeting. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, accepting the certification of signatures for the period uh, January 1, 2024 through June 30th, 2024, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, seeing none. The motion carries 5-0. And uh, I'm certain that uh, Trustee Dryden will be in here at some time during the week to uh, put at her signature. Uh, consideration of acceptance of the proposal of board meetings uh, date, uh, dates and calendar for 2024. Do I have a motion? I move to accept move. the proposed board meeting. Moves. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Sullivan, I just wanted to, to make mention that uh, on the whole, we are continuing to follow that pattern uh, of uh, Tuesday uh, meetings. Um, I want to bring the board's attention to a couple of dates. Uh, one is in March. Uh, that meeting is off schedule. It's there on Monday March uh, 11th, uh, that is just uh, an adjustment intended to allow us to fulfill some of our statutory obligations for that for that timeline. Uh, the other one is, uh, is in June, um, and that has to do uh, with consideration for uh, Mrs. Peterson and her um, uh, participation. And I would I want to say it's so Mrs. Board meeting on that particular Tuesday. It has to do with the end of the year. That's uh, Tuesday, uh, April. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll take that back. Monday, June 10th. Uh, and then uh, beyond that, um, there is a placeholder uh, for July. Uh, that is a meeting that the board can decide to uh, keep or, or not. Um, there is no date penciled in at this point but rather an acknowledgement that over the last several years, we've had a special board meeting in July. Again, just there as a placeholder. Um, other than that, um, I believe that all of these follow um, regular meeting patterns. I, I noticed that, that you know, that was going to be my question about the one. Um, we're moving to one in June. To June 10th, I saw that, and then the potential of having special boarding on, on June the 13th, same week, and that July was a special board meeting, not a regular board. That is correct. In June, we have to have two meetings one to uh, present, present hearing, and then ratify. And then right. Yeah, the, the LCAP uh, must be presented in a regular board meeting. And I'm going to uh, just make a comment on the last one for December 17th. The reorganization meeting uh, typically that had to be concluded before like december 15th and now that's been pushed back to december 20th so i'm just gonna make a comment there yeah absolutely right uh there's a there's a time range there that allows us to be able to still hold it on the 17th so any further discussion about the board meetings for next year hearing none uh all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. 
Any opposed say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries uh, 5 0 in favor. Consideration of approval of the proposal from SENEL for the painting of the handrails. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the budget for the handrails. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. It's been moved and second. Any discussions? Uh, I'll the just offer up that uh, we recently installed uh, a, a handrail. It's what prompted maybe this uh, to come forward uh, in looking across the campus. There's just a need to upgrade uh, the look and feel of those, uh, of just the campus overall, but the handrail specifically. And it's just our, our way of continuing to incrementally go about uh, uh, improving, yeah, paying attention to things, improving the the form and function of uh, of our equipment and of our facilities. I just had a curious thing: uh, approximately how many handrails are there? I, I don't. I, I have no idea in that. terms of number. I know where they all are, but I have right. no idea in terms of numbers. They are. They're all over the campus, I'd and they're they're on the interior of the campus predominantly. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the proposal with uh, SEM, SEMEL for the painting of the handrails, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries 5-0 in favor. Uh, consideration of approval of the proposal for Pacific Floor Company for the resurfacing of the stage floor. Do I have a motion? I so move. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Uh, any discussion on this one? Uh, as was mentioned uh, during the superintendent's report, this is just uh, an opportunity to uh, to uh, upgrade uh, our stage uh, and our cafeteria. A lot of work has gone into that as part of the bond project. And uh, this is another, another way of uh, bringing that entire space into um, just better accord. So I'll, I'll have a question with this. Is that being the case? Is this being funded with bond money? Uh, it is not, no. General fund. Mm -hmm. And previous one, I'm assuming as well, general fund. We're trying to keep bond money for all. Right. I got that. Right. Uh, when was the last time it was uh, resurfaced? Well, uh, based on my anecdotal information, it's got to be well over 10 years at right. minimum. At least um, eight and a half. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, we've uh, I've talked uh, pretty extensively with our our custodial crew, some of who whom date back, Mister Mister Puga and Mister Sanchez, Mister Puga in particular, and they don't have a recollection of having having been done. So um, it's just I think it's time, and I think it'll it'll showcase what is coming together as a nice gathering place for the school. So we're look. We're, I'm really looking forward to it. And um, I think it'll really uh, improve the look and feel of uh, of that space. When I was looking at this, did I got the impression that this might be coming into a more routine thing, like every three years? Is that what I? Uh, I'm not quite sure on that. I think that'll be a follow up with the contractor. Um, right now, um, just because we have to bring it into shape, we'll talk about what is the appropriate maintenance schedule. I've been doing that with any other project that we've done. Is bringing it up current and then talking about whether it's annual or or uh, semi-annual whatever the, the right pace is for the maintenance and regular upkeep okay. any further comments or discussion hearing none all those in favor of approving the pacific floor company for the resurfacing of the stage floor say aye aye, aye. any opposed say nay hearing none the motion carries five zero Um, next is considering the approval of the invoice from landscaper Bartolo Escobar for tree trimming. Do I have a motion? I so move. Second. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. We moved and second. Any uh, discussion? I'd like a little bit of background since the invoice was very vague. 
Uh, yeah, the 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 work uh, performed was for all of the trees out in front of the parking lot. Um, that is uh, work that was done last uh, probably two years ago now, and uh, it's really uh, routine maintenance. Uh, in in reality, uh, with the winds and conditions here as they gust, it, it really almost becomes a safety issue because uh, any one of those uh, we've had instances where branches break. Those are very heavy branches. And uh, unfortunately, uh, those can lead to even more extensive damage of the tree entirely, where they fall. They become very top heavy. So uh, I'm uh, just to front load the board. I'm looking to do the same in the in the trees that um, that are on the perimeter of the property as well. But these are for, uh, and I don't have an exact number in front of me, um, but all the trees effectively in the front of our of the property and in the parking lot. Any other questions or comments? I like it when trees are trimmed. It's a, it's a good look, so thank you. Is that including in front of the wall? Is there any trees out there in the top ridge, one or two, or small? And it does not include the, the citrus and orchard trees that are on this side of the wall. Gotcha. All, right. All those that are in favor of approving landscaper Bartolo Escobedo for the tree trimming say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Hearing none, we the motion passes 5 0 in favor. Uh, consideration of approval of the MOU with Golden Valley Charter School. Do I have a motion? I'll motion to uh, approve the MOU with Golden Valley Charter School. I'll second the motion. Any questions or comments? Discussion? Uh, I, as I mentioned in, in, um, in the summary, uh, there's only very slight adjustments uh, to the language, uh, mostly getting rid of obsolete uh, language in the MOU. Uh, more broadly, it's been a really good working relationship already the last couple of years with their executive director, their new executive director, Mrs. Deanna Downs. Uh, I sit on their board and um, we just met uh, a week ago. Uh, it's, it's a school that uh, has served the community for uh, over two decades and um, continues to do good work uh, for the families they serve. So uh, very, very uh, uh, very supportive of the board uh, approving the MOU. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of approving the MOU with Golden Valley Charter School say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries 5 0 in favor. Uh, Item I, the consideration of approval of a quote from CompuWave Inc. for the purchase of laptops. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion for consideration of approval of the quote from CompuWave for the purchase of laptops. Is there a second? A second. Uh, discussions or questions? Uh, I'll just offer up that, that again, this is, uh, these are laptops for certificated staff, and uh, they are, uh, we have landed uh, in consultation with uh, Dr. Julie Judd, uh, who, who partners with us in the, with the Ventura County Office of Education on a four year refresh cycle. So the last time that the, that the staff received new devices was back in uh, uh, winter spring of 2020. So uh, these devices are upgrades. Um, they offer better uh, specs and, are able to uh, provide us, um, you know, with with more usability in the into the next several years. Two questions. Number sure. one, uh, I remember when we did this the last time, but is uh, is this budgeted and part of what we've got scheduled? So no, no, because it is a pretty good expense there. And then the other is just a curiosity question. You know, we purchased these, and I know some technology you you do on a rolling kind of lease. Kind of process has that ever been anything that we've looked into as far as you know purchased four years and then obsolete or 
you know, a cost of a turnover every year or two when they're kind of more of on a lease basis. I know some business companies will do that. Uh, the the challenge with the challenge with lease is that the 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 devices decline in value as much as they do. Um, so we really haven't entertained uh, a lease agreement, uh, more so because for that reason. Uh, obviously, there's an outlay of capital in this case, uh, but it's one that um, is very consistent with where other districts are. Um, this particular device model or device and model is very is one one in the same with what the county office um, uses and ones uh, very similar to the one that you see here. So anyway, um, it, it's been explored, but but I, I don't know that the costs uh, are, are there for us to be able to move in that direction. Just curious. It's not sufficient savings, and it's something that we plan for and budget for on an annual basis uh, to do the, the, the refresh for the one-on-one -on -one devices as well as their staff. Okay. This is a question. Thank you. This is specifically just the computers and nothing to do with print capabilities. No, it's for just the devices. Any yeah, other discussion or comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the quote uh, from CompuWave Inc. for the purchase of laptops say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Hearing that, the motion carries 5 0 in favor. Consideration of approval of the field trip request to Mission San Fernando Rey de Espana. Do I have a motion? Yes, I move. And do I have a second? I'll second. Dr. Gandhi. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Uh, only to say that this is an annual trip and it's either to San Fernando or to Santa Barbara. Uh, in this instance, it was to San Fernando and we're excited that these are opportunities that are um, our fourth graders uh, who are studying California missions um, get to experience and um, just excited to give them that, that, that chance to get out of their, out of their zone of comfort. Right. So who's funding this? It's not only like 100 bucks or 125 dollars. Yeah, yeah. The, the cost is pretty nominal, and it's it's co it's covered through a PFO. PFO uh, semi annually provides us with um, grants that help uh, offset the cost of uh, field trips. And that's the question simply for the weekend. You know, it's their generosity, you know, for funding these things. We yeah, yeah. Our P so absolutely, our PFO, you know, amazing every single year parent volunteers that do everything from uh, logistics and event planning all the way out to fundraising um, and 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 then some. So absolutely, uh, they're phenomenal and every year incredibly supportive. All right. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the field trip uh, to Mission San Fernando Rey de España, say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries 5 0 in favor. Uh, consideration of approval of the field trip request to Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History. Do I have a motion? I so move. And second. I'll second the motion. Any uh, discussion or question? Uh, well, just the same. Uh, our PFO, again, supporting our field trips and, and opportunities. And uh, this one happens to be for first grade to Santa Barbara. Uh, museum of uh, natural history. Planetarium. Say that again. They're doing a planetarium on this trip. Uh, yes, they, they are. It's astronomy, I know this was. Yes, and and I'm not uh, uh, too familiar with because they have a smaller little satellite programs as well. Uh, but um, that's the focal point. Right, but they have a planetarium on site. Right. It's a great field trip. Right. This is related to field trips. I know that eighth graders take a field trip. Do you know they're going to go to Washington D.C. this year? Yeah. Yeah, the the Washington D.C. D.C. trip over the last several years, even before my arrival, uh, is um, is one that is uh, more or less parent initiated okay. and parent led, and that is something that is in the works. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the approving the field trip request to the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries 5 0 in favor. Items for future consideration is the 2022 2023 School Accountability Report, report uh, or SARC. And uh, our next meeting will be January 16th uh, at 6 p.m. With that, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. And congrats to Trustee Sullivan and Trustee.